My name is Marianne Murphy and I'm a wildlife biologist and a raptor educator here at the Southeastern Raptor Center at Auburn University. We are part of Auburn's College of Veterinary Medicine and what we do here is deal strictly with raptors. Now raptor is a category of bird. There are many types of raptors and there are many species of raptors. Raptors all have three things in common and we're going to talk about what makes a bird a raptor and also what to do when you have raptor issues in your life. Let's start with Sandy Gibbs. Sandy is one of our volunteers and she is holding a red-tailed hawk. Now as I said raptor is a huge category and the hawks are one type of raptor. There are many species of hawks in Alabama, we have several species of hawks, and the red-tailed hawk is one that you will often see. It is named for the reddish colored tail feathers that it has here, and it has these feathers as an adult. When it is a juvenile bird, it has a brown striped tail. They come in lots of different colors and even lots of different sizes, but if you see a large, conspicuously perched hawk, it's probably a red tail. Now, these birds are considered raptors, and that's normal birds flap their wings. I would too if I had them. Uh, this bird is considered a raptor because of three things that all raptors have in common. First of all, they have very sharp talons. These birds kill with their feet. Raptors are grabbing birds and that's what gives them the name of raptor. They grab and these talons help them catch their prey. Now no birds have teeth so if you are a bird that eats other animals you need to have a method for tearing your food and all raptors also have a sharp hooked beak. And of course, the third characteristic of raptors is that they are carnivorous, they eat other animals. Now, a red-tailed hawk like this one is often seen close to town, in neighborhoods, and people often worry that this bird may be preying on their pets. Now, birds like this are very strong and they are very capable, but they cannot carry as much as you would think. They are strong enough to kill something that weighs more than they do. However, they cannot carry more than about half of their weight. So this bird weighs just over three pounds, which means it would labor to carry a large squirrel or a small rabbit, which means that pets, even toy type dogs, and kittens would not usually be on the menu. If your pet is missing, we tend to say that it was not a raptor that did this. However, if your pet's head is missing, it may have been a raptor. Very rarely, but on occasion, they do prey on pets. Usually this does not happen for a couple of reasons. First of all, they cannot carry it away. They have to eat it on site, and they cannot eat all of it. Secondly, the behavior of domestic dogs and cats doesn't usually attract the predatory behavior of a raptor. They are programmed to chase things like rats, mice, bunny rabbits, and the bold, aggressive, confident behavior of a pet cat and a pet, even a pet toy poodle usually doesn't encourage the response of attack from a raptor. In addition, being around people and the fact that the dog usually is accompanied by its owner off and on in the yard will keep the birds spooked away. If a bird is in your neighborhood, chances are it already has plenty of prey choices available, squirrels, rats, and that means it's not going to deal with your dog or cat. Dogs and cats are a lot of hassle. They can injure a hawk just as badly as a hawk can injure them, and so they're not going to waste their time wrestling with a dog or a cat that could kill them or severely injure them when they're just as happy catching a rat or a squirrel or a rabbit that is a lot easier for them to eat it doesn't cause as much damage to them in return. Now this red-tailed hawk is a daytime hunter. During the night it is resting and hiding out of sight, probably trying to avoid being eaten by a great horned owl. And this is Kerry Gibbs and he's going to show us a great horned owl. Thank you Sandy. Now great horned owls are pretty much our largest nighttime bird that you're going to see flying around here. These birds are very large. They look a lot bigger when they're flying. They can sometimes have over a four foot wingspan. They are great, meaning large, and horned because they have these feather tufts on their heads, which are not actually horns or ears. They are just feathers that perhaps help camouflage the bird. You can see that his feathers are very well detailed and patterned, so he blends in with the tree bark and the lichens on a tree. Now, if you haven't seen these birds, it's not because they're not in your area. They are in your area. They live all over Alabama. They fly mostly at night. And during the day, they rest up against the tree trunks 
and their feathers camouflage them. Now these birds are incredibly strong, stronger even than the red-tailed hawk we just saw. His prey is pretty much what the red-tailed hawk eats during the day, he eats at night. So rabbits, rats, um, any number of ground-dwelling mammals, and also anything he can catch. These great horned owls are actually capable of carrying more than half their weight, but still these birds are lighter than they look. This bird weighs less than five pounds, which means that he would labor to carry something that weighs three pounds. He can kill large things, but he would still labor to carry it off. And again, even though he's capable of killing something the size of a raccoon, something like that is gonna turn around and do a number on him in return. And he probably wouldn't be trying it again. So dogs, cats can occasionally fall prey to a very hungry great horned owl, but that is extremely uncommon because the birds rely on all of their equipment working perfectly well or else they will starve. So if they are bitten soundly by a cat or a dog and they injure a foot or a wing, that's the end of their career. And they're not gonna be out there doing it again and again and again. And they may not even survive that first tangle. So these birds very rarely take animals that are pets as prey. Now another concern that people have about the red-tailed hawk and also the gray horned owl is their poultry. Now it is true that chickens are prey species. I eat them myself. And these birds will sometimes take advantage of barnyard poultry, ducks, chickens that you have in your yard, or domestic ducks that you have out in your pond for your enjoyment. Now, there are several things that you can do to try to avoid this being the case. One of the easiest things I suggest is to get a dog. Most people have a dog, and if you can have your dog out in your yard, as providing that your dog doesn't eat your poultry as well, often the presence of the dog will keep the wild raptors spooked away. In addition, having a coop that your poultry can go into at night will keep the birds away from your, the wild raptorial birds away from your domestic birds, and you won't lose as many of them. Now these birds, as I said, are found around here, and so are other species of hawk and owl. I'm sure we've all heard of chicken hawks, and those are the ones we usually worry about killing our poultry. Chicken hawk is a slang term for anything that's eating your chickens. Chicken hawk is not actually a species. Um, Red-tailed hawks will sometimes prey on chickens, sometimes Cooper's hawks will prey on chickens, and even some of our smaller hawk species will sometimes prey on the smaller baby chickens. But again, this is not as common as you would think because of the human habitation, keeping the wild raptors spooked a little bit away from all that hustle and bustle of our activities. Having your pet dog in the yard or having a coop for the birds to go into are some ideas for keeping the predators out of your barnyard. Now there are a couple other things you can do to discourage these birds being in your yard. First of all, just like I like to live somewhere near a grocery store, these birds are going to want to be close to a ready supply of prey. Brush piles attract bunny rabbits. Log piles and just general unkempt yards attract rats and mice, which is normal. But if the more opportunity you have for prey to be in your area, obviously the more predators you're going to attract. This species of vulture is called a black vulture. Lots of people call these birds buzzards. And buzzard is a slang term. It's okay to use it, but they're more properly called vultures. We have two species here in Alabama. The turkey vulture has red skin on its head and the black vulture has black skin on its head. Juvenile turkey vultures are also black skinned, but in general, if you see a red-headed vulture, it's a turkey vulture, and a black-headed one is a black vulture. Now, these birds sometimes do inspire complaints from the public because they tend to congregate in large groups. These birds are very gregarious. They eat together. The different species hang out together. They will also search for prey together. And sometimes when they roost together in groups of sometimes over 100, their droppings can become a problem. Now, there's droppings on cue here from our black vulture. Now, these birds do an excellent service for us. And one of the most important things to remember about these birds is that their pros definitely outweigh their cons. They eat dead animals. They are scavengers. And scavengers like this are responsible for cleaning up all the roadkill and all the animals that die of other causes in the woods and along the waterways. They prevent the spread of disease by ingesting all of the dead, rotten material from the carcasses of a variety of creature. 
whether it's a dog or a deer, another bird, these birds consume all that material and they render it harmless with their strong digestive systems. At one time, farmers believed that vultures spread disease by eating diseased cattle and then making their droppings fall in the grass that the other cattle then ate. It has since been found that these birds stop the spread of disease with their strong stomach acids. They do not spread even contagious diseases with their droppings and they do not encourage human or livestock disease through what they've consumed. However, their droppings can become a problem if there are hundreds of them roosting on your property. One of the best ways to get rid of vultures is to scare them away, repeatedly scaring the birds with loud noises or other types of visual stimuli will often encourage them to find another place to roost. However, like all birds of prey, raptors and vultures are protected by state and federal laws. So it's important to remember that you cannot simply just shoot these birds or remove their nest without special depredation permits from the Alabama Department of Conservation and Natural Resources. So you don't want to take the law into your own hands if these birds become a problem for you. You can try scaring them away, throwing stuff into the trees, making loud noises, and also using other means to kind of get them spooked and riled up and convince them that this is not a comfortable place to rest. And again, next time you see a vulture on the side of the road, keep in mind the great service that it's doing and keeping your neighborhood clean and that even though its droppings can become a problem, these birds are definitely better to have around than not. Now our next bird here that Carrie has is an eastern screech owl. Now this little guy, believe it or not, we get some complaints about this bird because they tend to roost up under people's eaves on their porch at night. They're out flying around during the day, they're roosting and resting and their droppings get all over people's porches. Um, often people enjoy watching these little birds because they're kind of cute to some people, but they do make quite a mess. Birds are messy, they make a mess, they're droppings all over your porch. Sometimes they are resting in the wreaths on people's front doors and again making a mess all over the front door area. One of the ways to get rid of these birds, frankly, is to scare them away. And we have some complaints about that sometimes because these birds tend to rely so heavily on their camouflage that they will just sit there and let you approach. And that makes them appear either tame or sick. And that's usually not the case. Even a wild screech owl, if it's resting during the day, thinks he's very camouflaged, even if he's not in a tree. He's a bird brain, he doesn't know that. He will sit very still and sometimes allow a very close approach. And often you can just grab the bird and transport it somewhere else. Now, you need to be careful whenever you handle a bird that it's got very sharp talons and a very sharp hooked beak. So I don't recommend grabbing them. I recommend spooking them away. But if they appear sick or tame, it's not necessarily the case. They often just sit very still and allow themselves to be approached very quickly and, and without spooking away as you would expect. Doesn't mean they're sick. Now, these birds live all over the place. They come in different colors. This is their full size. And they also do a great job keeping your yard clear of insects and mice. So they may be making a little bit of mess on your porch, which you can discourage by scaring the owl away. However, at night while you're sleeping, they're hard at work getting some of the vermin and pests out of your yard. Here at Auburn University Southeastern Raptor Center, our missions include rehabilitation of injured, ill, and orphan raptors. Now, raptors, since they eat a lot of mammals and other critters, hang out oftentimes by the side of the road and they hunt mammals like rats and mice in the ditches and any other critters they can find in suitable habitat, which is often what gets them in trouble. Many times we get raptors that are injured because they were hit by a car. It is illegal to shoot raptors without a, a special permit to control them on your property. However, sometimes they do suffer from gunshot wounds and have a variety of issues which may cause you to find an injured bird. Any hawk, owl, eagle, or falcon that is injured is going to fight you for its life. It does not understand that you are trying to help it. Some of these birds are stronger than men with their grip strength in their feet. They're not very heavy, they're lightweight, and so their strength will surprise you. Please be very careful if you find an injured raptor. Be very wary of its feet especially. Some of the birds bite, but all of the birds will grab. If you could use a large heavy towel or even a blanket like a comforter and kind of shuttle the bird into a cardboard box with holes punched in it for air, that's the best way to transport an injured raptor. 
wire cages damage feathers, and damaged feathers means the bird will not be able to fly when it recovers from its injuries. Injured raptors are received here at the Raptor Center 24 hours a day, seven days a week at the Small Animal Clinic at the College of Veterinary Medicine. If you find an injured raptor, please just bring it to us and we will take care of it and release it back into the wild if it's possible.